Feels like football, baby. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome into the Fantasy Football Smackdown Waiver Wire Sniping for Week 8. I'm your host, Kyle August. You can follow me on Twitter at KyleMonth8. Look at that. Uh, week 7 is going to be kicking off here tomorrow. It's going to be crazy. A lot of teams trying to patch work their rosters. Uh, we get it. There's a lot of teams on by this week. Luckily, a little bit of a break for all of us with only two teams on by in Week 8. But again, as always, these are the players that you need to stash Right now, for free, before kickoff, get ahead of the wave wire, get ahead of the rest of your league mates, that they're going to be looking to add these players next week when I'm talking about them right here on the wave wire show every Tuesday. But you guys checking out this show, you're ahead of the game. These players are going to be already going to be stashed, and uh, you'll be looking good. So let's pick up the W in Week 7 and get that extra edge on our league mates for Week 8. So obviously, you're checking this show out on YouTube. It's a YouTube-only show, but we have tons of great content, of course, throughout the entire week. So... Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. Get those notifications turned on. That way you always know whenever we're going live, because it's not just this show. Uh, we have other great content here on the Warzone Network, including, of course, 7 p.m. Eastern time every Thursday night, live start sit show. So bring your questions. I'm always hanging out, getting those questions answered before Thursday night football. So that's been a lot of fun. Appreciate you guys continuing to tune in there. But uh, make sure you hit the like button on this video. Check out all the Warzone content. It's been a great season so far. Still a long ways to go. About halfway now after this week in the fantasy regular season, championships will be here before you know it. So let's dive into this week's stash candidates here heading into week eight. Like I mentioned, not as many teams on by, which is great. Baltimore Ravens and the Raiders. So there's definitely still some firepower going to be missing from our lineups, but uh, not as bad as week seven. So Ravens and Raiders on by. Looking at the quarterback, I still can't believe that Jameis Winston's only 50% owned. So he still qualifies for a streamer now owned in half of leagues. He's probably owned in yours. But when I saw somebody like Tua, who does have a great matchup in week seven going up against the Falcons, Tua's ownership jumped about 30%. Jameis only jumped about 10 to 15%, which is crazy because not only does he have a decent matchup, in my opinion, uh, for week seven, you can stream him right now, pick him up and play him. I'm good to go with him coming off the bye against the Seahawks. He gets Tampa and Atlanta the next two weeks in New Orleans. So this is a three-week guy for me at least. He's been up and down. I get it. He's not been a high-volume guy, but um, you know he should be getting a little bit healthier here over the next few weeks, hopefully. Traquan Smith uh, was designated to return. We'll see when he plays, but Michael Thomas hopefully on the horizon here shortly. So Winston would be at the top of my list for sure. Justin Fields would be number two for me. Last week, week six, he had the most rushing yards that he's put up so far as a starter. We'll see if that continues in week seven. If it does, if we're seeing him uh, you know, take that next step against Tampa Bay, I like him as a streamer against San Francisco, who has given up 18 or more fantasy points to four of the five quarterbacks they've faced this week. Number three on this list is Carson Wentz. He's a little bit safer. He's playing Tam He's playing Tennessee in week eight. He's 37% owned. He's been pretty solid. Two plus touchdowns, I believe, in his last three or four games uh, a piece, which has been really good. He's kind of back on track, I feel like, as a streaming candidate. So he's a safer look over fields if you want to just play a little bit safe fields. I think it's the upside play there. Daniel Jones is number four. His weaponry has been decimated by injury, but he gets Kansas City in week eight, 28% owned. And if you're super deep looking for a guy and you have – You've been playing Derek Carr, Lamar Jackson. Jared Goff is another guy that I don't mind taking a look at. He's 9% owned, gets Philly. Philly's given up 18-plus to four of the six quarterbacks they faced on year. I don't think that defense is really that great. So uh, that's who I'd be rolling as quarterback streamers. Running back stashes. This list is pretty depressing, to be honest with you. Uh, a lot of guys are jumped that 50% threshold. So here's the guys that I'm stashing, though, this week. Rashad Penny. Uh, as of recording this right now, don't know what Alex Collins' status is for Monday night. Now, he did not practice Thursday or Friday. Saturday is really the deciding factor. Car uh, Chris Carson has been put on IR. So he's out at least another two weeks. But Penny, for me, is the guy that I would stash as far as the guys under 50%. He's 36% owned. Ownership's definitely taking a jump. If we see him in action on Monday night, we're all going to be able to see him. And if he looks good, people are going to be going after him hard on Tuesday's waiver wire. Number two on this list, Marlon Mack, trade candidate, 18% owned. Ramondre Stevenson, 22% owned. He definitely seems to be like the number two guy now. He's jumped Brandon Bolden, I think. And while Damian Harris is solid, I think Stevenson could still get some looks there in New England. The last two guys here are definitely some handcuffs that are just not anywhere near the ownership of the normal handcuff guys. Jarrett Patterson for the Washington football team, 6% owned. We know Gibson's been banged up dealing with that injury. And Samaj P. Ryan back from the COVID list. 
Uh, when Joe Mixon saw limited staffs, P. Ryan was definitely getting a lot of work. So 8% owned. Um, they've been using the running back a lot there in Cincinnati. So I'd be stashing P. Ryan if you're in leagues where a lot of the handcuffs are owned. Deep stashes. Uh, Michael Hasty for the uh, 49ers was activated off IR. He could be playing this week. Just take a look. That backfield is usually a mess, but that's a deep league stash. I saw him even available in some dynasty leagues of mine. And Chris Evans, like what I saw from that kid last week. Um, while P. Ryan was out, 3% owned, just deep league. Take a look, see if he's still hanging around. Wide receivers. A couple guys that are a little bit more owned around at 47% at 1 and 2 here on the list. Kadarius Tony. he's going to be out this week, but I like what I've seen from him. He left the game early last week and had three targets like the first minute. Um, he's been getting a lot of work. They've been dealing a lot of injuries in that wide receiver group. But I think Tony's actually done enough where he's probably leapfrogged these guys, even once everybody's healthy. So we'll see, but he's just a guy that I'm looking to stash for now. Darnell Mooney, also 47% owned. He's actually been the better wide receiver between him and Allen Robinson. And if Justin Fields continues to take those steps, I think he's going to be a viable uh, bi-week replacement type wide receiver. Rashad Bateman back another rookie. He was, he led the team in targets last week. He's 29% owned. The reason it's a little bit harder to stash Bateman is unless you're playing him this week, then you got to carry on through the buy and then maybe look at him as a potential roster fill in uh, player for week nine and beyond. So I like Bateman a lot if I could stash him, but I think right now you could probably kind of let him lie on the wire. Chances are, even if he has a decent enough week and he's a little bit on people's radar, he's probably not going to get picked up uh, heading into a buy. Rondell Moore, 39% owned. Want to see how this Zach Ertz thing affects this offense, but he's shown flashes. Again, you're just trying to catch lightning in a bottle with this kid. And Amon Ross St. Brown. Uh, this is a guy 18% owned. He saw seven or more targets in his last three games. Now Detroit, I believe is heading into a buy. Let me double check that for you guys here after the Philly game. Uh, I'll take a look. Yeah. So they have the Rams this week, then Philly, then a buy. So another guy that, yeah, you could pick him up. Maybe play him as a, a streamer or like a bye week stash, uh, for week eight, but then he's on buy in week nine. So that's why he's a little bit lower on this list. Deep league stashes. Nico Collins saw six targets upon his return for Houston, 1% owned and Cedric Wilson saw seven targets last week and has been pretty decently involved in this Cowboys offense. Uh, and it sounds like that Michael Gallup is still a few weeks away. So even once Dallas is off the buy, Wilson's a deeper league guy that you could probably plug in and play. All right. Tight end streamers, 50%. Uh, owned Ricky Seals Jones, I still think is at the top of this list, and he's just at the threshold. So RSJ at Denver, he's still your top streamer if he's if he's available. But again, probably picked up. Let's go to the way sub fifty. I'm Evan Ingram at Kansas City. I just expect that to be a high scoring game. You're throwing the dart. Thirty one percent owned. CJ Uzama gets the Jets. Seventeen percent owned. He's been hit or miss, but he's had touchdowns in two of his last three. I like him this week as well. If you need a streamer, you're not loving your tight end option for week se uh, for week seven but I like him as a streamer for week eight and Gerald Everett gets Jacksonville 29% owned. Uh, he was first week back off the COVID list was last week. So we'll see how that one looks with Geno Smith under center for the next probably, you know, th two to three weeks at least. And I'm going to mention injury stash here. Logan Thomas continues to get dropped. I'm not hundred percent sure why I don't think RS just taken over that job. I still think it's Thomas's job once he's back and he's on IR. So a lot of times when you see these players put on IR is they aren't necessarily dropped in leagues because you can usually just stash these guys. So um, his ownership continues to drop. He's down another 10% this week. And I think he's a top 10 tight end. Once he returns, I think he takes that job back over. So 54% owned Logan Thomas, go get him now. And last but not least, of course, everybody's favorite part of the show, DST streamers. I actually like this. I think there's some decent options this week, uh, especially compared to uh, last week. And if you're watch obviously you're watching on YouTube, I'm not sure where this typo is for uh, the Chargers. Not sure who NE0 is, but my bad on that. Uh, but top of the list is the Cincinnati Bengals. The, that unit's been actually pretty decent this year. And they get the Jets, of course, the special matchup of playing Zach Wilson. 17% owned. I think the Bengals are your top streaming option at DST. Seattle Seahawks get Jacksonville. Uh, that Jackson will be coming off the buy, but that's going to be in Seattle. So I'll take the shot on the Seahawks at 8% own. And then the chargers also coming off uh, their bye week. They're playing against new England at home in LA 16% owned. So those are your DST streamers for the week. Well, there you have it. Waiver wire sniping for week eight, best of luck in week seven, make sure that uh, you're all set, ready to go. But after you have those lineups set, see if you have an extra roster spot, stash some of these guys for week eight and get ahead of that waiver wire. So, I'll be back next week on Tuesday, of course, with the Fantasy Football SmackDown Waiver Wire Show. And as a reminder, again, every single Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern time, starts set for the week ahead of Thursday Night Football. Again, subscribe on YouTube. Turn those notifications on. Let's go. Come hang out with us. 
Uh, appreciate you checking out waiver wire sniping. Good luck week seven. Catch you next week. See ya.